The Theory of Critical Racists with MJ Jackson coming at you. Well, 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 it is good to be back on my channel. Uh, And I see already we have quite a bit of folks uh, in the live chat, of course. Uh, The Mega Mod, uh, Nate2D2, Naomi, what is going on? And uh, my man, Mr. Green, good to see you, good to see you. And uh, Ben, Ben Handelman, my man, and uh, already uh, he's uh, throwing some kudos out there to uh, to M- our our brother MJ Jackson, saying he's one of the smartest Christians I know, and I second and third and fourth that because Mr. Green already second that. But um, <clears throat> uh, today, obviously, uh, we have my brother, a good friend of the channel. Uh, this is not his first appearance. And, uh, but actually, uh, MJ Jackson, I mean, we've been doing a lot offline, uh, between apologists and Detroit, you and, and Alfredo. And, and so it, it's, it's, it, we haven't been doing a ton online, but we've done some stuff on your channel, but, um, but it seems like we're, I mean, we're definitely in contact daily, uh, if not several times a day, but, uh, but introducing, Friend of the channel, my brother, my dear friend, MJ Jackson. MJ, what is up with you, my brother? What's going on, uh, good, good people? I can honestly say that uh, my family has grown <laughs> through the pandemic. God has given me many brothers and sisters who I do keep in touch with on a daily basis. I'm a, I'm always blowing their phone. I think I blow up the chat that we communicate through more than anybody. They're probably like, what is Matt? wanting to, to complain about now when they see when they see it because yeah. he might have read something or seen a video that has triggered him and nine times out of ten yeah i am triggered <laughs> but uh but you know hopefully it's righteous indignation I, I pray to god that it is but no uh yeah we have been doing a lot of work and you know uh yeah it feels weird to be back on your channel only because we haven't stopped working since you took a little vacay from your channel, but you know, hey, here we are. Amen. Amen. Adrian Jones, good to see you. And already early on with the super chat, thank you. Yes, and we are definitely trying as hard as we can to get canceled. No, we're not, but I mean, uh, but we I mean, you know, all the all the more reason that we attack these, you know, I mean, and I, I say attack, but I mean, uh, you know, there are these uh these issues that are going on and this and it's sad because this, there's this internal fight within within the body of christ this is a real and, bnh story and um well was that me or was that you <laughs> i don't know where that came from <laughs> but uh but yeah so um yeah here we go that's probably a good word confront uh so um uh, yeah. So, uh, and Ben said he just got done reading the article as well. So the, uh, the article we're going to look at today, it is, uh, it is. And now that we're speaking, uh, speaking of some of this stuff, uh, we are going to be cr- doing some critiquing. So, uh, you know, we're going to use the fair use warning and please understand and please know that we dearly, 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 dearly love, uh, Dr. Stratton. Uh, and we, but you just simply disagree with this particular stance that he holds. And, uh, you know, like I was saying, there's, there's these, these sort of infighting within the body and we disagree on, on, on certain things. And so we come from the, uh, the, the side that believes that the, the, the term critical race theory is being misused. I don't think, um, and I, I, I don't want to speak for my brother MJ, 
but I don't think any of us uh, would say that we um, are sold out a hundred percent to CRT in total. Now I, I, I do see that there are certain areas of CRT that could be of good use for us to, uh, as a litmus test, not necessarily as the worldview as, as many are claiming. Um, but I think it could be used as a litmus test for us to, to gauge, uh, whether or not we are, uh, to, to borrow from our brother, uh, apologist in Detroit, uh, to gauge whether or not we are fully immersed in human, human flourishing. And so, um, so these, these are some of the things that we look at and it's not that we're defending. Uh, and again, MJ, if I'm putting any words in your mouth, please correct me. Um, but <clears throat> we're not, we're not defending or we're not being CRT apologists or defending CRT proper. But we're, what we are trying to point out is the, the misuse of the term and, um, and get into some of those, uh, some of these things or, or these, these misappropriations of, of the term or of the, the languages and or of the concept or ideology of, of CRT proper. Um, and so, uh, so MJ Jackson, anything to add to that? Uh, you're on mute, bro. Sorry. I'm, I'm ready to get this thing <laughs> snowballing. I mean, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Just <kidding. laughs> um, this is purely uh, a it, it, it's an interest in, in in an exercise in representing the other side right, and this is the opportunity for Christians to be consistent. You know, when we're seeking to minister or engage in apologetic dialogue with unbelievers um you know we're taught whether if you went to some of these apologetics workshops or you know sometimes i know that some of my friends um might have certain trainings for their patreons behind the scene behind the scenes we're taught to uh listen to ask questions uh, if you if you read uh tactics by greg Cole, ask questions and repeat back so that we're not strong manning, but that we're still manning the other side. For whatever reason, when it comes to politics, I think that we begin to start acting like politicians. I cannot stand politicians. I'm gonna just be perfectly honest with you. Um, I cannot stand politicians. I understand that they have to represent their crowd or their group but i think something is terrible when we start taking on the talking point uh methodology of politicians and then seeking to integrate that into our christian witness and i think that when we do something like that we render our witness ineffective if at best and at worst we slaughter us because, you know, we we would have been uh, we would have been putting misinformation out there that misrepresents the other side that, that we're either seeking to reach or seeking to combat. So, this is an opportunity for us to check ourselves and to make sure that we are using our minds uh, in, in an effort to worship God and also represent present uh, the other side correctly. I think I saw uh, Dr. Trent uh, Daughtry, um, who's a philosopher. He says that, you know, an ideology is at work when smart men make bad inferences. So that's not coming just from me, but that's coming from a trained epistemologist. Okay, that's the branch of philosophy that he that he <laughs> operates in. He's a well-respected philosopher. So Without further ado, um, I just want to say that uh, that this is not personal for nobody. This is just a good opportunity for us to kind of, you know, uh, stick our finger in the air and see which way the wind is blowing today. And uh, and this is a good opportunity to just take a look uh, at 
um, what's been going on with with within Christian apologetic circles. So, um, hmm. All right. Um, <clears throat> so, what I wanted to do, MJ, real quick, is sort of premise uh, and sort of show some some initial uh, <laughs> evidence of, of of muddying the water. And uh, some some may or may not have seen uh, seen this, uh, but this is from one of the leading uh, proponents of anti CRTism, if you, if you will. <laughs> <laughs> creating terms as we go. Um, but this is from uh, Christopher Rufo, uh, who is, uh, he's one of the the leading anti-CRT pro uh, proponents or uh, individuals who is leading the way of, uh, of the war on CRT. Uh, and so he has, he has taken up the, the, the banner and, uh, and he does feel like he, this is his duty. And so he's, uh, here's a, here's a tweet from him. Uh, and th this is a cause for concern because, you know, CRT uh, has been a catch all term. It has been a, uh, something that people have been using to shut down conversations about race and about the history in the past of, of America and, and things. So, so he, he says here in his tweet, and this, this was, uh, back in March, uh, mid March. And he's, he says here, we have successfully frozen their brand, uh, quote, critical race theory, um, into, uh, into the public conversation and are steadily driving up the negative perceptions. And we will eventually turn it, turn it toxic. And we will put all the variant, uh, various cultural insanities under that brand category. So there's there's an obvious uh, a push for the this um, and and yeah, uh, Green says it right. I mean, this is what we've been saying is that uh, they're standing up what's called a straw man, or you know, we're calling it a boogeyman. You know, it's it's become this catch-all uh, phrase. And, and they're admitting to it. He's admitting to, and the goal is to have the public read something crazy in the newspaper and immediately think. So here's, here it is, is, is he's showing, he's showing that they're intentionally trying to draw negative perceptions of the quote unquote brand of quote CRT in critical race theory. And we have uh, decodified the term and we'll, and will recodify uh, it to annex the entire range of cultural constructions that are unpopular with, I would say, conservative Americans. So this isn't just a, this is a, a particular uh, purpose in rebranding and retooling the term. Now, if the shoe were on the other foot, and if this were, the folks who would say that, you know, they're, they're for some sort of CRT. They definitely, definitely, I, I guarantee that there would be an outcry and outpouring, but this is them literally saying that we're standing up. They're admitting to it, that we're standing up a straw man. Do you have any thoughts to that MJ before we uh, continue on? <laughs> Somebody said that is such a scumbag tweet. <laughs> Not the person, but the tweet. The person might be a scumbag. I, I, you know, I'm gonna keep, keep it real. With you. I think Christopher Rufo is a, is a scumbag, and and, and I because you, I mean, you just flat out lying. And you better be careful because you might bust hell wide open with gasoline draws on. And, and so, and and then, like I said, I don't think that he has. I think he's lying so much because he thinks that the people who the people that he's appealing to are stupid. Mm -hmm. I I told him this is this is this is what I think. You got folks, let me just talk, let me just I'm gonna put this out there. You got people who don't even have kids in some of these school districts, districts 
driving hours. <laughs> they live in the boondocks and they drive in hours just to go talk crap at these school districts about CRT being in socialist Marxist public schools and their kids are grown. This is crazy. This is absolutely crazy. And if, if you think that I'm being partisan, let me tell you something real quick. I have absolutely no love for the Democratic Party. Uh, I think they just is full of crap. And one thing I do like about CRT is CRT puts its foot up their behind too, as much as they put as much as it puts up its foot up the behind on the folks on the right as well. So you, it's, it's like Malcolm X and, and and Martin Luther King giving it to both the liberal and the moderate or conservative. So I I it's it's just it's crazy to me it's extremely crazy and i think christopher rufo can get away with it because one he's not a christian and two the people that he's appealing to i want y'all to catch this are not free thinkers right and 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 that's that's exactly why we're dealing with it on this particular channel because you know if this thing is nothing but a political thing why do we have a bunch of christians you know, talking about this thing. Well, that that's, that's why is because, because, um, actually what I noticed is that the, uh, this actually started, this rhetoric started, uh, and, and on your channel, you and you and Detroit did uh, a show on, uh, the, the, the gospel and the statement on the gospel and social justice. Uh, I think you guys, uh, I think you did at least one part. Uh, there might be two. I can't remember. Um, part two. So, okay, yeah. So, so I know that part two either happened or is going to happen, but um, <clears throat> but the the thing is, is that uh, that's where most of this social justice, anti-social justice stuff started was way back in like sixteen, two thousand sixteen, and it had a reemergence in uh in the with the George Floyd, and then uh, but not only was it in Christian circles, but now it was, it was being deeply politicized. And now you're hearing the same rhetoric that was being taught by, uh, you know, John MacArthur and some of his camp using some of the, the, the buzzwords that we are now hearing now, uh, that was all the way back in 16, but now the reason why it's catching so much fire and it's becoming a major issue issue within Christendom is because uh, of this resurgence uh, of this whole social justice movement. And so that's some, where a lot of this came. So it, it sort of was dying down. And then all of a sudden it, because of George Floyd, because of this, this massive, uh, you know, it was sort of the straw that broke the camel's back. Uh, now there's this resurgence of, of CRT and anti CRT and, and Marxism and all these things. Cause, cause Vaudi was using the same terminology. He was using the same rhetoric Back in sixteen, cultural Marxism, all these buzzwords again I'll, that are. I'll, I'll do you one further. Go ahead. <laughs> uh, you know who Jer Reverend Jeremiah Wright is? Uh, enlighten me. Enlighten okay. Us. That's that is uh that is President Barack Obama's uh, pastor. Every, uh, everybody remember when President Barack Obama was running for president in two thousand. 7 2008 the culture war at that point was liberation theology mm. so so Vody hit the scene talking about liberation theology and it wasn't just Vody. i mean like i said they were talking they were, they were talking about it uh then too and so 2008 2007 2008 is liberation theology uh then 2012 you have uh, you have the young man who gets killed by Zimmerman uh, a little bit after that and, and like I said cell phones are becoming really 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 good at this point after that you have Mike Mike Brown uh, then the whole black lives like uh, 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 black lives matter rise begins to take form 
like I said, voters not thinking about CRT. CRT once again, CRT has been around uh, since since the late seventies, early eighties. Vody just jumped on this train, uh, and a lot of folks jumped on this train is because it was a new flavor in the so-called culture war, which the right has to have just to stay relevant. Now, the left also has to have the existence of racism to stay uh, relevant as well, but the right cannot exist without a quote-unquote culture war. And so this is just... uh, this is just another episode in uh, the quote unquote culture wars that that they have to have in order to stay relevant. Because, you know, like I said, we're not seeing any new ideas. Uh, we're not seeing any uh, solutions to some of the problems is just, you know, uh, pointing at the problem, but not proposing any type of solutions. And, you know, like I said, we, we and that, you know, and we get, we're going to get back on subject here. But like I said, we, you know, they they did the abortion ban. Praise God for the abortion ban, right? In Texas. But I guarantee you that Abbott is already doing his hands like this, thinking about how many prisons that he's going to need to build on the back end. So uh, th- this is the left and the right. They're both full of crap. And the Christian should not hitch uh, the fine vehicle of the kingdom to either one of those wagons. Because we got something totally better that transcends both. And so, yeah, I have absolutely no problem critiquing either one. Amen. Amen. All right, MJ, uh, where do you want to go from here? Uh, I know you had a, a couple things uh, that you threw threw in, in our uh, back chat. Um, did you want to go to the article right away? Let's just look at the video real quick. And... and and then we'll get into the article. Well, you know, t- I tell you what, we've we've pretty much get, gave everybody a little in. We can skip the video because okay. the video is just backing up what we've already said. CRT has now become a catchphrase where people basically dump all of these things, white fragility, anti-racism, things like that, uh, into the bucket of CRT and then seek to knock down a straw man. And mm-hmm. so uh my my contention is Christians should not be doing that. Uh, I kind of have an expectation of po- uh, po- politicians to do that, but I don't think Christians should be uh, engaging in that type of behavior. So, but without further ado, let's uh, get into the uh, get into the article. All right. So yeah, uh, real quick, uh, CMB the ambassador. Shout out to you, brother. Uh, be on the lookout for uh, and subscribe to him as well. Uh, and then I know he's got some stuff coming up with uh, BK Apologist, so shout out to BK Apologist as well. All righty, so here we go. We are going to look at this. And again, uh, before we get too far into that, I just want to again make sure that we know that this is uh, according to fair use. Um, so we are going to critique uh, and, uh, teach. And, uh, so again, this is not an attack on, on, uh, brother Stratton personally. Uh, this is, uh, just a look at, uh, what he views as a worldview and, uh, and looking at, so again, this is from directly from him. So we're not misquoting. This is his article, free thinking ministries. Uh, and again, uh, brother Tim, uh, if you, see this in the future or if you're if you see it anytime uh now uh please please do not see this as a personal attack so we are uh we are looking at this so again so the theory of critical racists and then um so some of this uh has uh it, it, it it's it's very odd because it sort of bounces back and forth between political and then christian and then sort of goes back into political again. And so um, reading the article, so it kind of jumps back and forth. So it was a little confusing to follow, but again, he's just sort of giving what he feels is this, um, this idea of, of what he believes is CRT. So, uh, so here we go. So uh, dear 
uh, KPS school board. Uh, in a sense, it is your job to, quote, legislate morality. The question is, whose morality are we going to force upon the people and the children of Kearney, uh, Nebraska? Uh, where do you get morality? From where do you decide how to legislate how the citizens of Kearney ought to live? It is based upon the philosophical foundations of America, the Declaration of Independence, or is it based upon something antithetical to American values? While many consider the aim of public education to teach facts as new, neutrally as possible, when it comes to the issues of morality, it's logically impossible to be neutral. So ironically enough, every school is in the business of teaching morality. The question remains, whose morality? Uh, stop me anytime you're, you're ready to, uh, brother. Uh, so, well, as, I'm, as we're reading through this. <clears throat> so look, everyone possesses, everyone possesses a worldview, if they realize it or not. Ultimately, based upon the laws of logic, one either possesses a theistic worldview or an atheistic worldview. God either exists or he doesn't. If God does not exist, then humans were not created on, on purpose or for a purpose. We are just a cosmic accident with no objective or unal un 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 unalienable rights. Excuse me. Jeez. So pay attention to that because he's already hinting at something, right? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so pay attention to these. Nothing more than, quote, dust in the wind, end quote. If this is the case, then it is not objectively wrong for government to murder its citizens, as Marxists often do. So again, there's another conflation. Mm -hmm. If God does not exist, then there is nothing objectively wrong with racism, rape, robbery, or anything else. So he's obviously uh, saying that there is this objective morality, which we would agree. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So if God exists, however, then everything changes. America's founders recognize this to be the case. It is exemplified in our founding documents. The Declaration of Independence is clear that America, America is a nation built upon the worldview of theism. Now, before you stop me, MJ, let's get through this next couple, because I know you're, this is where uh, both of us had issue. So he quotes the Declaration of Independence, which we hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal, that we are endowed by the Creator with un with a certain with certain un in, unalienable rights. So then he goes on and says, "Notice the the Creator is with a capital C. This is where objective, unalienable, and equal human rights come from." This is why we ought to treat everyone with respect, and it's in it, why it's objectively wrong, even for a government, to violate a fellow fellow human's rights. So, MJ. Um, All right. So, uh, you know, whenever whenever you are offering a critique, it's best to point out certain places. Where you do agree okay so i'm going to start out in the places i do at least agree in theory uh, so I, I i do agree that it is the the school board's uh duty to to govern to legislate in a certain sense what's right and point out and lay out the boundaries that are not to be uh that are not to be breached or broken. Um, and I, you know, I totally agree uh, that ultimately morality, uh, ultimately morality comes from a certain place and that there is no such thing as a neutrality. I'm, I'm in total agreement there. I think that to pretend that there is a, such a thing as neutrality um, 
And like I said, Texas would like to, uh, to get its teachers to teach history from a position of neutrality, how you can teach new teach something neutral regarding the KKK is beyond me. <laughs> Ku Klux <laughs> Clowns is beyond me. Uh, I digress. But everybody has a worldview, okay? So I, I totally agree with him. And the biblical worldview provides the best framework for dignity, all that good stuff. Now, the point of, of disagreements is, is that the major point of disagreement here is that the foundational documents are a good source to legislate morality and that our founding fathers believed in God or a creator or things like that. Well, here's the thing. Which God did they believe in? That's the question. Mm. Because they didn't believe that black people were made in God's image and in his likeness. I can guarantee you that because we were in slave, we were in chains. And so when it comes to legislating morality and when it comes to teaching history from a a, a, a non-neutral position, we got to be honest about these foundational documents. Because once again, we, we were uh, African-Americans were in chains. And not only that, it had quite a few nasty things to say about the Native Americans. And so, and, and, and see, and this is this is the this is also one of the issues, is that if you was to say certain things like this within the classroom, things that I'm saying, they would say that oh, you're being a Marxist. But why? Because you're laying a critique to America, as if being able to critique America has anything to do with Marxism and nothing to do with the Bible. The critiques of a nation have always been something uh, that uh, Christians, uh, what true Christians have done. And you can see this tradition of laying critiques to a nation going all the way back to the prophets. And so I, I totally uh, would take issue with even the suggestion um, that our, our founding documents can legislate morality in, in, in such an unqualified manner. They have to be qualified and critiqued and filtered through the biblical worldview themselves because uh, if we're gonna go with original intent, which is something that um, which is something that people on the right love to do when, when they talk about states' rights, uh, when they talk about the role of government, when they talk about marriage, things like oh, that. We're going we're gonna to talk about original intent here in a second. <laughs> <laughs> so once again, you, you can't, you can't play hopscotch with these founding documents. That's my whole point. What, what, what say you brother? All right. So here's what we're going to do. <clears throat> so we're, I'm going to harp on the original intent version because see, we've, we've been sold a myth, right? Uh, anyone who's been, you know, if you've listened to this channel, my channel, uh, before we went on break and uh, any of the stuff that we've been talking about, <clears throat> you know, this is this. I mean, this sounds fantastic. You know, we hold these truths to be self-evident, right? That all men are created equal. OK, <clears throat> so that's that's, you know, that's part of the first line. And and, you know, but this this is who they were. This is who they were. uh speaking to they were speaking of the, the the king of great britain and this is in the this is in the the document so the history of the present king of, of great britain is a history of repeated injuries and uh usurp you i can't say that word <clears throat> Us, usurpations uh, all have usurpations yeah you go all have having the direct object the establishment for an absolute tyranny over the states. So it goes down and it starts listing a, a, a list of gripes, right? So here are some of them. He, the king again, <clears throat> has erected a multitude of new offices, 
sent to hinder the swarms of office to officers uh, to harass our people uh, and to eat out of their substance. Okay. He, the king again, has affected to render the military independent of and superior to the civil power. Right? So these are gripes. But I picked these, some of these, just as clear examples of, of again, intent. The original intent is, is no matter which way you slice it, it's off. Because these gripes are the same things that they did to the original peoples of the Americas. They, they stood up all of these things, even though these were gripes and they seen them. Listen, they seen them because these, everyone is created equal, right? So they were saying, look, you are treating us unequal by standing up these military powers that are superior to the civil, to the civil power for protecting them and by, uh, by mock trial for punishment for any murders, which they should commit in the inhabitants of these states for depriving us in many cases of the benefits of trial by jury, you know, so, uh, blessings to you, uh, Rick Barboa blessings, my brother. So again, you know, these are things that they're griping about and you can look at this. You can see I've put the, uh, where I pulled the quotes directly from are down there in, uh, constitutionfacts.com, uh, and, or, <clears throat> um, you can go to, uh, you can go to Barnes and Noble and real quick, and you can pick this up. It was like eight bucks. It's the constitution and the declaration of independence. And it even, it even has the, uh, uh, the Confederate, uh, articles of the, con the confederation. So even, even that's in there. That's in there. So, so again, you know, $8, go and pick one up or you can get it free online. Just go and look it up, but read the documents. Please, people, read the documents because you get these conflations like this. But then again, 30 lines down from every man is created equal, you get stuff like this. He, the king, has excited domestic insurrections among us and that and has endeavored to bring on the inhabitants of our frontiers, the merciless Indian savages, in the Declaration of Independence already dehumanizing somebody dehumanizing a giant class of people whose rule of warfare is undistinguished destruction of all ages, sexes and conditions. So these savages, Oh my gosh, these savages, but they, I mean, so there and again, let's not use these documents and let's not conflate the fact that this nation has a past and let's not use CRT to try and shut down a conversation because, uh, I'm not sure if it's in this article, uh, but I know that, um, you know, uh, some of the stuff that he has brought up in maybe even in the video. So maybe we will get to that if we can, uh, after we share some thoughts. Um, <clears throat> but he lists all these things that, you know, this is CRT and all this stuff. And, but again, and, and this is not just uh, our brother Tim uh, who is conflating these things. This has been, this is, this is the rhetoric. And that's why we thought it was important for us to go through and look at these, this, this dummy man, this straw man, this boogeyman, and show the intent and the intentionality behind it because it's disturbing. Because if you can go back and you can cite this document saying that, oh, they knew, look at it, it starts with a capital C, but yet you fail to, you fail to realize and see and look at these things. And this is so, so when was America great? That's what I want to know. When was America a moral authority? That's what I want to know. So. This is all, this is sort of a, a short timeline and I'm not going to try to eat up too much time, MJ, but I'm going to move through these real quick. But here's, here's some of the, the main proponents of, of the uh, Chief Justice Marshall who helped stand up the, this idea of 
uh, of the doctrine of discovery. And, and also these types of things are, are what, what stand up this idea of American exceptionalism. Manifest destiny is, is also something that is called. Uh, but we'll look at some of those terms. But the Indian, the, the tribes of Indians inhabiting this country were fierce savages, right? Whose occupation was war. So I mean, this 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 is almost taken right out of the the, the declaration, right? So and whose substance was drawn chiefly from the forest. So to leave them in possession of their own country was to leave the country a wilderness. To govern them uh, as a distinct people was impossible, because they were they were as brave as and as high spirited as they were fierce. So, I mean, he was trying to throw us some props, kind of a backhanded compliment, but again, they were ready to repel by arms every attempt on their independence. So they obviously knew that they, they were infringing on our independence. There was something clearly wrong because they seen us fighting every attempt for our uh, independence and, and yes, Nate to D2 notice. They didn't call it woman, <laughs> woman, of fast destiny. <laughs> Shout out to servant of Christ ministries, brother. We love you. Uh, subscribe to his channel, uh, and also subscribe to real reviews, uh, and check that out. I appreciate you brother for showing up and being here. Also, uh, BK apologist. We were shouting you out earlier, brother. Uh, but in case you missed it, uh, go subscribe to BK apologist as well. Uh, amazing, amazing content. So, sorry, uh, President Andrew Jackson, right? <clears throat> so he was one of the main uh, proponents of the Indian Removal Act. Uh, and this was his address to Congress in 1833, so that tribes cannot exist surrounded by their settlements and in continual contact with our citizens is certain. They have neither the intelligence the industry, the moral habits, nor the desire of improvement. Improvement upon who? Upon what? What do you consider improvement? Right? Manifest destiny, American exceptionalism, which are essential to any favorable change in their condition, established in the midst of another and a superior race and without, see here again, race, superior race. Okay? Moral high ground? I don't think so. Uh, and without appreciating the cause of their inferiority or seeking to control them, they must necessarily yield to the force of the circumstances and ere long disappear. Okay. <clears throat> so the greatest president of all time, the great emancipator, the man. So everyone has, you know, when you're doing, when, you know, when you're asking who was the greatest president, it's either number one or this guy. But while this guy was being, being brought up as the great emancipator, uh, he had enacted the, the largest mass execution. And some of this stuff is stuff that we've, you've heard before. And if you haven't, then, uh, uh, you can look it all up. The Dakota 38 execution is still to, to date the largest max execution on American soil. So this was under the great Abraham Lincoln, <clears throat> American progress. This is the ideology. We freedom, the, the white angel, the saving, the saving white version of Christianity. She's holding a Bible is coming to the dark lawless Indians with the animals who are on par and we'll look, we're bringing you civilization. That's, this is the, this is the key. So this is, this was, uh, this was American progress. This was manifest destiny, right? <clears throat> Here's why. Here's why, uh, the great emancipator wanted to clear out those lands. Michigan, Wisconsin, the Dakotas, Minnesota. He was making way for manifest destiny. He was making way for, uh, for Western expansion is what it was called. This is why. This is exactly why. Compares, comparing some of the genocide. Now look at some of these things. The moral authority. 
And see, again, I'm not attacking Dr. Stratton. I'm not attacking, yeah. but see, this is the thing is that there, there is this idea that America, that we are closely tied. Our, our religion is closely tied. We are based upon Christian principles, Christian foundations, capital C. You can see that they, they were, see, but again, look at the genocide, Rwanda, Hitler, Nazi Germany, 35%, 68%. Manifest destiny between just between 1800 and 1900, 67, 60%. But discovery from pre contact to 1900, we have a 96% genocide rate. Founding documents. So, when was America great? So, we have from the founding documents to 1963, and then from 1963 to, to Standing Rock, North Dakota, with peaceful protesters, the water protesters. So again, tell me, how can we lean upon these documents and say that America was great? So here it is. Uh, these slides are adapted from uh, my good friend Mark Charles and his uh, in his presentations. So here's the mythology. Here's what we're taught in our schools currently, right? That it was discovery. Uh, you know, Lewis and Clark was the discovery core. Um, you know, this is, this is the ideology. This is, this is why, and this is what we're talking about. They want to maintain the mythology of discovery of equality, expansion, exceptionalism, ex excuse me, exceptionalism. Cause I'm, oh, God forbid that America is not great with liberty and justice for all. We're a Christian nation or we're for Christian principles. And that these, these things are self-evident, that they're were created equal, endowed by the creator. But here's the reality. Discovery equals dehumanization. They had to dehumanize. In order to discover, they had to dehumanize the indigenous people and the African Americans. Because these lands were built upon stolen land using stolen resources by the efforts of stolen people. That's the reality. Equality, literally, and Nate 2D2 sort of alluded to this uh, earlier, but even within the Constitution, it wasn't talking about people. It was talking about white landowning men. White landowning men. Women, all again, dehumanized, right? That's why we, we have women make less than men. That's why they make percentages on the dollar to men, right? It's working. This constitution is working. The, the founding documents are working. Expansion equals ethnic cleansing. Exceptionalism equals genocide, right? Liberty and justice for all. No, it, they were really aiming it towards white landowning men. Christian nation, Christ, Christian principles. No, they were leaning towards Christendom. Self-evident, created equal, endowed by the creator. It's really who they say. I should have, uh, I should have uh, crossed that out, but no, <clears throat> it's not self-evident. It's whoever they say. And I'm done with my rant. <laughs> MJ. Yes, I just want to read a few quotes. Uh from Martin Luther King because he, he's going to come up and he's greatly revered. Uh, I don't think that he's greatly revered. I think that a lot of people try to uh, tokenize the radical, the black radical Dr. Martin Luther King and use him to their benefits. I'm being honest. That's how I feel because here's the thing. If you read everything Dr. Martin Luther King wrote, you would not agree with him. <laughs> you would not stand with him. And I'm going to bring some stuff out that he wrote later in this show. But concerning the uh, the founding fathers, uh, he's talking about Jefferson. He says, in his notes on Virginia, Jefferson portrayed the Negro as inferior to the white man in his endowments of body, mind, and imagination. Although he observed that the Negro appeared to be superior at picking out the tunes on the banjo, Jefferson's majestic words, all men are created equal, meant for him 
as for many others, that all white men are created equal. Yet, in his heart, Jefferson knew that slavery was wrong and that it degraded the white man's mind. It was only wrong because it degraded the white man's mind and soul. In the same notes he wrote, for if a slave can have a country in the world, it must be any other in preference to that which he is born to live and labor for another. I indeed tremble for my country when I reflect that God is just and that his justice cannot sleep forever. The Almighty has no attribute which can take sides with us uh, in such a contest. I would imagine that's probably also why Jefferson went through the Bible, ripping stuff out kind of like Marcion uh, as well. Uh, and like I said, we find quite a bit of evidence of slave Bibles and things like that, where there, there was a shaping, even of the cat where the caste system in America even attempted to shape a religion of its own imagination. How about that? Amen. <clears throat> I'm going to, so America was great from 1982 to 99. Reagan. How about that? Reagan. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and this was CRT was most active. How about mm. that? <laughs> How about that? Uh, you know, and America never was great. I mean, I, I you know, purple pill, I, uh, you know, I, I just I, I flat out disagree with that. Um, you know, I love you. Uh, absolutely. Uh, you know, no disrespect. But I mean, until here, here's the thing. Until we get the uh, the the BIA out of the Department of Interior, this country is racist. Until we we have better representation uh, with native people in this country, um, it, this country is racist. I mean, it's just, I mean, it's, it's a, it, this, this is such a, it's a, it's such a weak argument because there's so much glaring, glaring, uh, things that are still in place. Reservation, the reservation system. I'm not talking about getting rid of it, but the point is, is that, I mean, the, the reservation system was not meant for native people to, to prosper. It was meant to kill them off. The, the, this whole idea of, um, you know, America was great. I, and, and again, I mean, there's, there's so many issues The the crack epidemic was then, you know, this, this whole thing. You know, the, the fact that they were able to see, and a shout out to you, Warrior Woman, as well. Uh, thank you for showing up, sis. You know, but it just, it, I just think it's funny that the crack epidemic was, they, they, they enacted such strict laws. And, but yet now that this has touched the, the suburbs, this whole, this whole idea of, uh, uh, the opioid epidemic and stuff. So now we're starting to use terms like epidemic. Now we're starting to use terms like, oh, this is a health issue. This is a, this is a mental health issue. This, but no, back then it was just say no. But, you know, this is, this is something that is, it, it, it's, it's deeply and, and we can see it. And it's, and yes, you can say, well, uh, you know, that's debatable. Yes, absolutely. It's debatable. All of this is debatable, but the, 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 the thing is, is, is I'm glad you're here and why I'm glad you're here. And even if you disagree, uh, I respect the fact that you do disagree purple pill, uh, and the fact that you are willing to, uh, you know, to disagree is because we're actually having a conversation. See, you're not using CRT. You're not trying to throw CRT up as simply as a roadblock to um to simply shut this conversation down and not have a conversation so that's something that i do appreciate and that i do uh i, I do welcome because we do need to talk about these things uh and so yeah so um brother mj anything to add to that or yeah yeah we have to ask the question about how cocaine even got over here in the first place Right. You, know, you know what? If you start digging, just like when you start digging with the doctrine of discovery, you sit there and you find fingerprints all over the thing. 
And, you know, we, we can talk about the rollback that Reagan was doing. And guess what? You said 1999, Bill Clinton full of crap, too. And not just because he's nasty, but also <laughs> because he wanted to prove that he could be tougher than Reagan. And so how did you prove that you could be tougher than Reagan on crime? You was, In other words, you was signing all kind of ungodly criminal justice laws uh, into law. And like I said, so 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 both both the left and the right are full of crap. <laughs> both the left and the right. Because like I said, you have mm-hmm. Bill Clinton wanting to outdo uh, Bush, Papa Bush and, and Reagan. And I, here's the I like Pop Bush. I think that I I I think he might have been an okay president if he could have got reelected, but you know he pissed off the Republicans, so that's why he lost. But I digress. I guess we can get back to to uh, to the good stuff because uh, Dr. Martin Luther King is getting ready to come up in this article. Mm-hmm. So here we go, right in time. So indeed. He says right after, uh, just so you see where we're at in the article. uh, Indeed, it is the unalienable rights given to us by God in which Martin Luther King appealed his famous I Have a Dream speech. Dr. King was clear that we ought to judge a person based upon their character, the choices they make, not by the color of one's skin. The The choices one makes up are to the individual the color of one's skin however is not with this in mind those who affirm king's i have a dream speech are on the right side of history those who oppose his message are racists today in an ideology is antithetically opposed to the message of dr king's dr king is creeping into nebraska schools The popular term for this evil is critical race theory, or CRT. But often it masquerades as so-called, here we go, buzzwords, social justice, equality, anti-racism, and systemic racism. And so shout out to apologists in Detroit. Amen. Jesus is king. CRT has a historical root in its... Atheist. Theistic. There we go. I I got distracted by the, <laughs> the atheistic view of Marxism from the scholars at the Frankfurt School in Germany close to a century ago. This is the same Marxist philosophy that led to the to deaths of a hundred million people over the course of a century. Any view based on Marxism is also based on atheism. And this view is dangerous because if God does not exist, then humanity was not created on purpose for any specific purpose. And thus, humanity does not possess objective and unalienable rights. If humans do not possess objective rights, then say goodbye to women's rights. Say goodbye to gay rights. Say goodbye to the rights of minorities and or anyone else. Say goodbye to Martin Luther King's dream. According to so-called theory of this critical racist is our radical characteristics define us, not our character or the choices we make. But think about it. That idea that our radical characteristics, our, our racial characteristics define us is racism. The view that we ought to treat others as either inferior or superior in our outlook of the world is based on your race. It is, def- it is the definition of racism. Indeed, as a scholar, James Lindsay notes, according to CRT, Martin Luther King was both wrong and naive. Amer- uh, white Americans can never judge blacks by the content of their character. They can only judge them by the color of their skin. So my question for each of you today is this, do you stand with Martin Luther King or do you oppose his message, his message that transformed our nation for the good? I am not asking you to affirm a particular religion, but you can 
legislate morally with God and the Declaration of Independence in mind, or you can legislate with atheism in mind and allow Marxism to destroy all that is good in our nation, including the, quote, good life here in Kearney, Nebraska. You have a chance to be a hero or to be on the wrong side of history. Legislate morality with the Declaration of Independence in mind. We are all created equal and possess unalienable rights and possess the objective evil or, or excuse me, and oppose the objective evil of critical race theory. So to oppose evil, we are asking you to, uh, to put on the agenda, vote from KPS and to send a letter of resolution to the state department, to the department of education, uh, da, 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 we the people calling you to do so. All right. MJ th- thoughts. <laughs> Your yeah, turn. I do have a lot of thoughts. Well, <laughs> this, this, this article seems to be adapted from his presentation that he gave. I think it was like a two minute presentation and to be fair, it was only two minutes. Mm-hmm. But this looks to be an expansion of uh, of that two minute presentation. Okay, I must say that within within that two minute presentation, I don't think that Dr. Stratton expected uh, to be asked um, questions as to where CRT was in uh, was located within the uh, curriculum, and so basically, Dr. Stratton says. Yeah, words like systemic racism, things like that. Uh, those are, you know, CRT. Well, one, I'm going to disagree because systemic and structural racism were coined not by Marxists, mm-hmm. not by, not by uh, uh, critical theory scholars, but by a Black Panther. <laughs> uh Huey P. Newton, and he wrote this book in 1967, and he goes by the name Kwame Ture and Charles V. Hamilton. He wrote this this book called Black Power, The Politics of Liberation. Mm -hmm. Uh, And once again, they were part of the uh, civil rights movement, but they kind of broke off because, uh, you know, nonviolence will only get you so far. And when people keep kicking you in the face, well, you see all those shirts around here that say, don't tread on me. You see what happened on uh, January the 6th. Mm. There's a certain group of people in this country that's not going to let you tread on them or kick them in the face. Right. Uh, yeah, Ronald Reagan, <laughs> he, he was he was a governor out there in Cali when these dudes started carrying guns. And uh, so much for guns rights when the black man started carrying guns, he started enacting all kind of laws that would make uh, the NRA uh, crap their pants, so to speak. So, uh, so much for uh, e- equality, but, uh, excuse me, not Huey P. Newton, I, I apologize. Stokely Carmichael, please forgive me. Please forgive me. <laughs> so Stokely Carmichael <laughs> wrote that. My bad. But, um, but, but we, we, this, this common, trope of Marxism of Marxism it is soon anytime you make a critique of America it must be Marxism that's deeply annoying to me because my ancestors in the tradition which I'm tied to which is a radical black anti-colonial tradition that goes all the way back from people like W.E.B. Du Bois, Alexander Cromwell, Henry Holland Garnett, Sojourner Truth, and Frederick Douglass. We we have had people critiquing America uh, apart from Marxism. Marxism is really more a critique of, of capitalism than it is of America as a whole. But like I said, we had rev- black revolutionaries critiquing uh, America going all the way back to the to the 19th and 18th centuries. It's just naive and it kind of 
shows that you just kind of discovered this tradition yesterday when this tradition has really been around and to confuse it as marxism kind of kind of there's an assumption that maybe blacks were incapable of leveling such a critique in the absence of, of, of white people. I'm just saying, that's what it seems like to me. But let's first uh, define CRT real quick. For the record, CRT is not Marxism and it's not critical theory. Let me say it again. It's not Marxism and it's not critical theory. CRT is no more Marxism than Arminianism or Molinism is Calvinist. It's Calvinism. Once again, I'm going to call us to be consistent. CRT is no more Marxist than Arminianism or Molinism is Calvinistic or Calvinistic or Calvinism is Catholicism. To do so, to, 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 to make that type of critique, you have to uh, basically throw sound reasoning out of the door to, to make that uh, that jump. But critical race theory, for the most part, evolved uh, as a response to the dysfunctional racial conditions of the 1970s and the 1980s in the United States. Uh, critical race theory uh, emerged from critical legal studies and ultimately finds its roots in the civil rights tradition, which in turn finds its roots in that tradition that I just told you, going back to the works of Black revolutionaries like W.E.B. Du Bois, Alexander Crummel, Henry Holly Garnett, Sojourner Truth, and Frederick Douglass. Uh, my good friend, Mr. Also a Carpenter, a.k.a. Bradley Mason, gives us his definition, which is similar to ours, but, you know, he's the big dog in this. He says, critical race theory at bottom, the radical civil rights tradition critically transformed to address a post-civil rights legal era rooted in the liberal ideology of colorblindness and equal treatment, which have together preserved and legitimated the continuation of racially subordinate circumstances. You got anything else? Why? Uh... <laughs> well, <clears throat> here's what we'll do: is we'll um, we'll we'll play the video to add some context. Because I have the I have the two minute clip, so bear with us. Um, and yeah, so I mean, uh, CRT is literally Marxism with a with a racial lens, and its founders uh, flat out say that in their works. <clears throat> uh, and CRT is a is a branch of critical theory in general. Hey, and and this is this is where we say, hey, cite them sources, produce your sources, let the chips fall where they may. But mm -hmm. once again, there there is there is a stream of logic because i can show you parts where they disagree with marxism where they disagree with marx i can show you parts where w.e.b du bois disagree with marx uh i i can show you parts where Derek bell who's supposedly the godfather disagree with marx and disagrees with critical uh legal studies um and, and once again you know, you got you got folks who are not <laughs> you got folks getting invited to conferences and things like that, simply saying what you're saying. Oh, yeah, it's literally uh, Marxism with a radical lens as its founders flatly sat. I source, please. Please. Source. Thank you. <laughs> All right, here we go. We're going to get into this video and then uh, uh, we'll add our our finishing remarks to this. Those who stood by Martin Luther King were on the right side of history. Those who opposed his message were racists. Today, an ideology that is antithetically opposed to the message of Martin Luther King is creeping into Nebraska schools, and many, including some on this board, seem completely unaware of this evil at best or are complicit in it at worst. The popular term for this evil is critical race theory, CRT but often masquerades as so-called social justice, equity, anti-racism, or systemic racism. 
CRT has its roots in Marxism from the scholars at the Frankfurt School in Germany close to a century ago. This is the same Marxist philosophy that led to the deaths of 100 million people over the course of a century, making Hitler's Holocaust pale in comparison. One particular board member here today has made it clear that these standards were not highly influenced by political leftists. Well, what do you mean by highly? Why would this board allow Marxists or those who oppose the message of Martin Luther King to influence what is taught in Nebraska schools even a little bit? Marxism and racism are evil, and allowing even a little bit of evil to influence the children of Nebraska is evil. This board member wrote that these standards were not developed by ideas of critical race theory. Well, what a strange coincidence that these standards use the exact same buzzwords which are included in the mantra of critical race theorists. Well, let's write this off as a crazy coincidence. If that's the case, this board should have no problem deleting the controversial language associated with CRT. Indeed, this board should have no problem incorporating language, making sure that Marxist ideas opposing the message of Martin Luther King will not be allowed in Nebraska schools. James Lindsay notes that according to CRT, Martin Luther King was both wrong and naive. White Americans can never judge blacks by the content of their character. They can only judge them by the color of their skin. You are either for Martin Luther King or against him. Don't be a Marxist. Don't be a racist. Don't be on the wrong side of history. Oppose critical race theory. Thank you. Richard Turner. Richard. Woo! <clears throat> Woo! We use an atheist to uh, James Lindsay, an atheist. We have no problem using an atheist to refute a straw man okay let's just let's just and see when you start doing all this stuff i don't have time to read all these books on critical race theory and critical theory but because i love truth but because i because i do love truth i did do a little bit of reading on critical theory and the problem with history as done in america is is people tend to isolate events away from the context that happens around them. First and foremost, remember what I said about uh, Arminianism and Calvinism and things like that? Remember what I said about Calvinism and Catholicism? Here's the thing. Why would, why would there even be a need for critical theory if they were already Marxist? There was something about critical theory that was different from Marxism. And one of the reasons that they needed to come over here from the Frankfurt School in the mid-1930s was because what? World War II was getting ready to start popping off. Okay? There was something wrong in Marxism that was not explaining everything or it lacked explanatory power and explanatory scope. So the critical theorists, that although they might have been influenced by Marx, they rejected a lot of his ideas. So if and if so, Jacob Arminius can he rightly be called a Calvinist if he rejects several tenets of Calvinism? I'm just saying, we got to be consistent right. here. You, you sit there and you say Marxism because that gets people triggered in America. And when right. you start getting triggered like that, you start doing things in certain areas in which you would not do with theology, with philosophy, with the things that you have to write papers on. But why do you get sloppy as hell when it comes to this subject? Why? Mm. Because politics is the religion around here. Mm. Politics is. And it's, it's disgusting to me. It really is. Because these people are intelligent. These, are, these people are uber intelligent. Super duper intelligent. But I think that politics keeps you from thinking freely or free thinking. Mm. Rightly said, brother. <clears throat> Uh, I posted in the chat uh, the a blog that both um, MJ, myself, and 
I'm sure apologists in Detroit who's in the chat as well would, uh, would sign off on, um, the, uh, a Bradley Mason site, also a carpenter, uh, that is, uh, that is in there, uh, in the chat. So make sure and go and check that out. Uh, he has a very, very, uh, solid, um, uh, let me try to find it here and I'll post the link, uh, introducing critical race theory. Uh, again, uh, I, I'm not selling out uh, wholeheartedly to critical race theory, CRT. Uh, I do think there are some, um, uh, yes, can, I, can, I, can I, can I say one thing? Uh, Absolutely. <laughs> when I said that I don't have time to read the books, I was speaking hyperbole. I'm, I'm reading the books. It's quite inconvenient that I have to do this, but Christians are, Christians are forcing my hand. I got critical theory books sitting right here next, uh, right behind me on my little book table. Hmm. So, yeah, I'm reading the books. We were asking you, Mr. Purple Peel Philosophy, not for a video. I don't want a video. I, I, I do not want a video. I, I think videos uh, videos are part of the problem. Uh, video people want video. That, that's that's the issue. I think everybody needs to sit down, and we need to put our cell phones down. We need to get off of YouTube. We need to go read books like those wonderful founding fathers that everybody seemed to love. Um, mm -hmm. Need to read books again, right? I mean, something as simple as this, right? If 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 Doctor Stratton would have read this fully and looked at the actual declaration of independence, I, I doubt that he would be so quick to sign off on it. You know, it's, it's a, uh, you know, people don't, people don't read the source documents. That That's an issue that there's a problem there. So, um, and moreover, you know, we, we are caught up in Christendom. The idea of Christendom is a heresy. The church is in bed with Paul, politics. If, if church is in bed with politics, it's an issue. There's a problem. Uh, you know, that's why many of us would, would say something like Jesus is King. You know, it's not just a buzzword for us. We literally mean Jesus is supreme even over these United States. Any over any, there is no such thing as a, as a good godly kingdom. It's not there. Christ did not teach that. Christ did not teach that, and, and, and he said that his kingdom was not of this world. So how in the world can America or any other nation state be Christ's kingdom? Because we definitely see that. You know, uh, you can see it all over the internet. You see it all over the, yes, the Christian national, uh, nationalism is definitely an issue. Uh, and Apologist in Detroit is another one that bangs on this stuff. You know, so shout out to him and all his work. Uh, check out his blog as well. Um, so, and I would agree with this purple pill. Absolutely. Absolutely. On We're not saying that we're not sitting here. I'm not sitting here as a Democrat banging on Republicans. I'm here as a Christ follower banging on the whole thing and the church because the church has, it has prostituted itself out. You have folks like John MacArthur saying you can't be a Christian unless you vote for Donald Trump. You've got, you've got all, you've got th this, I mean, the whole thing, it's yeah. all that. That's why we have the doctrine of discovery is because the church had prostituted itself. Yeah. Both sides, purple pill. I mean, guarantee it. So yeah, there is a, such a thing as too woke too, right? There is such a thing as too woke, right? So we're, we're with you. We agree with that both sides of the aisle. We're not saying, you know, this is just a, a Republican right side thing. We're saying that this is, this is an issue within the church, right? This is an issue within the church that the church itself is, is being a whore to the, to the government. And we see it. I mean, we got all these religious leaders saying that, look, we need to get back. I mean, look at right now, you know, Look at right now, we got Donald Trump saying he's going to organize some interfaith uh, council, you know, that is going to bring this country back to faith and all this kind of stuff. It's baloney. It's junk. And so the fact that that we cannot be, we cannot see in front of our political eyes and we are so afraid of the American past, we have to protect and we have to, we have to 
to insulate the American past that we're going to stand up a, a straw man called CRT. Like we, like we showed in the beginning with, with, uh, with, with Rufo, they're going to stand up this, this ideology, this false ideology, which the church is happy to, to, to co-sign. They're happy to sign off on it. And yet they're standing there saying CRT, this CRT, that Marxist, this Marxist, that without truly understanding what it is. There's no way that I could be a, 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 a advocate of CRT. I've never been to law school. I've never been to law school. This was something that was taught in law, but now it has been popularized and the, the word has been hijacked to mean something else. And then we're fighting over this, but what we're, we're all we're saying is, look, let's look at the history. What's wrong with looking at history? What's wrong with looking at the past and, and seeing that there was an issue? What's wrong with looking at these, all of these things and saying, look, there was something definitely wrong. How do we learn from that past and how would, how do we continue forward? But people are so worried about this, maintaining the status quo that they want to, they want to formulate, they want to populate, they want to, they want to push this idea of this CRT that they've created instead of being honest about the, the sins in, of the past and everyone wants to be exempt. And that's why, again, we push this idea of Christendom. This idea of Christendom, may, it, 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 it preaches a, 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 another version of it is this hyper-individualism idea. That way, this, this, you are exempt as an individual for the sins of the past, but yet the sins of the past, they are alive and well to live on. The ideologies maintain themselves and they live on to next generations. The status quo, the system remains erect and strong, upright. Meanwhile, the individuals that are living within the system, they can either turn a blind eye to it, which many of those who are against CRT are doing. And then there are those who are fighting to say, hey, look, there is an issue with the system. But then yet we want to throw these all these ideologies and jumble it up and make it hard to understand and and they want to go and get all this these all these ideologies and mush them into this one term. That's what we have issue with. That's where we're saying, look, we have to get past this CRT dummy and look at the facts and look at the histories and say, look, how can we move forward? Because if I punched you in the face. And I didn't acknowledge it and just said, hey, you know what? That was in the past, so we should just move forward. How are, you gonna, how are we going to be able to operate? How is our brotherhood going to stay intact? I like the analogy that Malcolm X gives. Go ahead. Said, Suppose I stab you in the back and pull it out two inches and say, I'm sorry. Right. I, I stab you in the back with a seven-inch knife, pull it out two inches and say, oh, I'm sorry. Right. We'll be good now, right? Right. <laughs> Still a knife for your back, for Christ's sake. Right. <laughs> right. So so that's what that's all we're saying. And so again, I don't sign off wholeheartedly on CRT. I think it can some there are some of it that is is hard to swallow. There are things I disagree with. Uh, you know, you want a nice breakdown, go and read Bradley Mason's uh I think I put that in the chat as well. Uh, but go study it. Go look at it. Go read some of the books. Let, let me just say this too, real quick. And I just yeah. want to read a few quotes. They call MLK a communist and a Marxist. Did you mm. know the same MLK that Dr. Mm -hmm. Strat is saying that he stands with? Let me just read you a few things. Because you, you, you won't be able to tell the difference between this and CRT. He says, soon the doctrine of white supremacy was embedded in every textbook um, in practically every pulpit, it became, he, he watched this, a structural part of the culture. And men that embrace this philosophy, not as the rationalization of a lie, but as the expression of a final truth. In 1857, the system of slavery was given its ultimate legal support by the Supreme Court of the United States in the Dred Scott decision, which affirmed that the Negroes had no rights, which the white man was bound to respect. 
virtually all of the founding fathers of our nation, even those who 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 rose to the heights of the presidency, those whom we cherish as our authentic heroes, were so enmeshed in the ethos of slavery and white supremacy that not one ever emerged with a clear, unambiguous stand on Negro rights. Check it also out real quick. Let's check it out. And this is this is something that Dr. Derek Bell uh, and critical race scholars also observed. And but this is Dr. King. Throughout history, throughout our history, laws affirming Negro rights have consistently been circumvented by ingenious evasions which render them void in practice. Laws that affect whole population, draft laws, income tax laws, traffic laws, manage to work. Those laws work even though they may be unpopular, but laws passed for the Negroes benefits are so widely unenforced that it is a mockery to call them laws. There is a tragic gulf between civil rights laws and civil rights laws implemented. There is a double standard in the enforcement of laws and a double standard in the respect to particular laws. All of this tells us that white backlash is nothing new. White America has been backlashing on the fundamental God-given rights uh, of Negro Americans for more than 300 years with all of her dazzling achievements and stupendous material strides, America has maintained its strange ambivalence on the question of racial justice. But check this out. This is something else. This is something that Dr. Uh, Dr. Uh, King advocated for. And this is really going to bake your noodle. <laughs> I love baked noodles. This is Dr. King uh, addressing the white liberal and the white moderate, as a matter of fact. Now, everybody likes to use Dr. King to advocate for colorblind, equal opportunity policies. Mm -hmm. Colorblind, equal opportunity policies. Well, let's look at that. Will you stand with Dr. King after this? The white liberal must also affirm that absolute justice for the Negro simply means in the Aristotelian sense that the Negro must have his due. There is nothing abstract about this. It is as concrete as having a good job, a good education, a decent house, and a share of power. It is, however, important to understand that giving a man his due may often mean giving him special treatment. I am aware that this has been trouble, a troublesome concept for many liberals since it conflicts with their traditional ideal of equal opportunity and equal treatment of people according to their individual merits. But this is a day which demands new thinking and the reevaluation of old concepts. A society that has done something special against the Negro for hundreds of years must now do something special for him in order to equip him to compete on a just and equal basis. Will you stand with Dr. Martin Luther King? Oh my gosh, it sounds exactly like CRT. Will you stand with the <laughs> man? Or, or, or will you, and I'm not saying it about you, Dr. Stratton, but will you stand with Dr. Martin Luther King or will you continue to try and pimp him and tokenize him from his grave? Mm. I mm -hmm. wish you would. Amen. Amen. All right, MJ. Um, final word. I intend to expand a little bit more on this on my channel uh, coming soon uh, because once again, I want to I want to beat this dead horse till it's dead. It's not dead. I, I still want to beat on it a little bit. And so I'm going to beat on the. And once again, I I don't endorse critical race theory, but. At the same time, I don't endorse uh, evolution, but I still take my behind to the doctor and get a checkup. <laughs> That's right. I don't endorse evolution, but I still go see the doctor. I got I got my vaccination. How you like them apples? Yeah. So um, I, I still think that it it makes for a okay. Um, now, okay, microscope to look at certain things. So, I, I, yeah, I intend to beat this horse uh, senseless on my channel in the upcoming weeks when I get a little bit more time. But I, I, 
I appreciate uh, you uh, allowing me to <laughs> come on and and talk and uh, to the Dr. Stratton. Like I said, I appreciate your work. I found a few places of agreement, uh, but I, I, I disagree on, on uh, some things as well, and I just think that um, we can we can take this critical uh race theory a little bit more seriously mm -hmm. and, and treat it for uh for what it deserves which is intellectual rigor and analysis we can we can be a little bit better than that than simply writing it off as right. marx uh like i said whenever aaron Ra and i'm pretty sure every, everybody know who aaron Ra is whenever he wants to argue that christianity is bad what does he do he talks about all of the murders and the crusades and things like that and so mm -hmm. when I hear that you know, critical race theory is bad because Marxism is bad, look at all the murders that Marxism uh, has contributed to. We can, we can, everybody can do that. Everybody can do that. We shouldn't be doing that. Amen. And, uh, <clears throat> you know, Dr. Stratton is, uh, is a, a friend of, uh, he's a mutual friend of, of some of ours, uh, some whom teach at uh, Trinity sim.edu. So, you know, if you want to further your Christian education, you could always, uh, why don't you consider uh, Trinity, Trinity Sim? Uh, and he actually, Dr. Stratton is a, is a, he's a prof there. And, uh, and so again, you know, this, this is not an attack on him personally. Uh, we disagree uh, on this in particular. I happen to enjoy a lot of his other writings uh, and some of his insights. Uh, they're thought provoking and, and, uh, so again, this is not a write-off. You know, we're not uh, just simply trying to uh, say that he, you know, we disagree with him wholeheartedly or hate him as a person or dislike him or any of those types of things. Uh, so, um, but uh, but yeah. So, uh, MJ, uh, anything coming up uh, on your channel? I know you mentioned a little bit uh, just now about uh, some of this stuff. But anything in the uh, near future as we uh, as we come to a close? So, yes, my mother is coming into town and I'm going to be trying to record an episode with her on what it was like to raise uh, a, a hellion. <laughs> <laughs> Believe it or not, I didn't say much growing up because like I, said, I, I, I was learning how to survive. But uh but, you know, we're going to talk to her about what it's like to educate and raise uh, young black men as a single mother, a single homeschooling mother, and also talk about mm. some educational options on my panel. Because, look, like I said, I, I would agree with a lot of things probably with, with Dr. Stratton. I think that the school systems uh, are subpar. Mm. I think that the education that is being spouted uh, by both sides of the aisle is dangerous. Mm. So, uh, as Christians, who I'm, I'm a woke Christian. I have absolutely no problem wearing that label. Mm -hmm. Once again, I understand where that label goes back to, and it goes back to that wonderful, radical, black Christian tradition that had to be woke when the mainstream church was asleep at the wheel. And so, you have you have that woke, and you have bastardized woke. Mm -hmm. So, I have absolutely no problem being woke. And like I said, if we were doing our job, all these splinter, uh, these phonies and, and um, inauthentic and synthetic groups wouldn't be popping up all over the place. But that's uh, that's what I'm going to be doing. I'm going to be doing some things with Brother Chris Bryan Samuel, uh, probably going to be getting with Adam Coleman again on his channel. I know he just got back home uh, mm -hmm. from Chicago. So, yeah, we got some things coming up. All right. All right. Awesome. Yeah. We, um, here on this channel, uh, we've got, I've got a, a bunch of stuff lined up. Um, next week, uh, I'll have, uh, servant of Christ ministries, uh, himself, uh, Dr. Jordan Ortiz, <laughs> doctor, uh, yeah, brother, uh, brother Jordan Ortiz. So we're going to be starting, a uh, a, a, a five or six month series. We're going to do it once a month. Uh, we're going to do verse by verse, line by line, precept upon precept, psych, uh, <laughs> on uh, First Peter, and then um, 
so that'll start uh, on the 26th. And then uh, on the 3rd, I will have uh, our good friend, apologist in Detroit. Uh, I'll have him uh, talking about the people of God and money. And then on the 10th, second Sunday of October, I will have the Honorable Elder Mike Holloway. Uh, we'll be talking about the continuity between the Old and New Testament, so you don't want to miss that one. And then uh, Hiding in Plain Sight with Elsie uh, uh, Lorison, uh, Thunder. Uh, we, so we'll be going over his new book. Uh, that'll be on the 17th. And then uh, the weekend after that, let me see what uh, date that is, because I just was able to confirm yesterday. So the 24th, uh, we'll, we'll have uh, Ninja for Jesus uh, on uh, uh, Preach Pierre. Uh, he will be ta- we will be talking about um, turning folks in the church from consumers to collaborators. So uh, we'll be kicking off a uh, discipleship series. And then uh, most of you have probably seen, um, uh, that'll be the 24th of October, excuse me. So uh, so uh, make sure to, uh, to tune in for that. And then also uh, uh, we had to reschedule Sister uh, Dana Owens. Uh, uh, she had some stuff come up. So um, uh, she is rescheduled on November the 7th. So that's a tentative date. Uh, so depending on her availability and uh, if we can uh, get things rolling, uh, but she'll be also uh, part of the discipleship series uh, called, and her show is going to be called "Do Do Life." Uh, so I enjoy her uh, her perspective of of doing life with folks and, and those types of things. So that's all coming up uh, here on Drops of Hope Ministries, and we're going to be uh, getting some more guests and and uh, and doing. Uh, just doing more stuff. So, uh, tune in every Sunday and, uh, MJ Jackson, very final word before we close. You're on mute. (laughs) It's been a minute. (laughs) Just, you know, just once again, I hope everybody will think about the, you know, how influences work. Uh, like I said, an Arminian is no more a Calvinist than a Calvinist is no more uh, Catholic, you know, and a, a critical race theorist. Like I said, if you're going to say that they're Marxists, you need to be willing to not just say it, but go in the literature and make the connections. Um, you need to be willing to make those connections a little bit more. You need to also be willing to try to account for the differences. As Christian apologists, we encounter this all the time when folks say, hey, you know, Jesus ain't nothing but a ripoff of dying and rising gods, or Jesus is nothing but a ripoff of these these mystery religions and things like that. And, you know, we, we do the rigorous scholarship there. How come we can't do it right here? And that's something that that's troubling to me. That's really troubling to me because I see people with PhDs doing this. People with master's level degrees and PhDs uh, doing this. And, you know, I had a conversation with a friend and he was able to, he didn't know the ins and outs of, of critical race theory, but he was at least able to, to argue uh, at least on a post-structuralist uh, notion, why he disagreed with post-structuralism, and therefore he disagreed with uh, crit- critical race theories. He made a, he gave an argument. I respect that. I'm not saying that you have to agree with it either, but I'm at least saying these soundbite type uh, um, talking point argumentation stuff. We don't do talking point argumentation and apologetics, and we shouldn't do that when we're doing public theology. This is this is this is public theology. What we're doing today, this is public theology, and sometimes public theology intersects with politics. But what I'm saying, our method should should be just as rigorous when we're arguing in public theology as when we're arguing in Christian apologetics, and hopefully we can. Uh, 
we can keep that same standard. Amen. Amen. All right, y'all. Thank y'all for uh, hanging in there with us. Uh, we hope that you have a blessed and happy rest of your Sunday. God bless. Thank you.